Sheffield, Sheffield. Sheffield, sorry. Sheffield. Yeah, you're from Buxton. What are you fighting in, in Sheffield? Mm. And uh, that's just a, a little fight to, to shake any ring rust off. Mm. Because in October the 5th, you're going to Liverpool, where mm -hmm. you're challenging VIP Steve Brogan mm -hmm. uh, for his Central Area Lightweight title. Mm, yeah, that's it. Look forward to that. A great opportunity and just something I can really pass up on. Well, it's no, it's a great opportunity, but mm -hmm. I, I've spoke to Steve. In fact, I did an interview, mm -hmm. and uh, he didn't record. Well, he did record, but in slow motion now, no sound. So <laughs> no, we're better today. So um, yeah, it's, uh, I, I, I will catch up with him in another couple yeah. of days. But when I did speak to him, uh, we didn't know the opponent. But on paper, mm -hmm. if you look at it, he's a big favourite. Yeah, of course, of course. When you look at records like that, but yeah. your record yeah, is a little right. bit deceiving because. Uh, you know, you, every fight you've had really has been on the road, hasn't it? You know, you've not, not quite every single one, probably half and half. Um, to start off with, I didn't really have the, the sort of backing or promotion or management to, yeah. to help me. So, me and my coach Rowan had to really find our way into the pro game. Well, I, I remember watching kind of you. It, it was yeah. your second fight, it was at Buxton mm -hmm. uh, on uh, Jack Massey on the card, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, that's it. And uh, you were very, very, very unfortunate not mm -hmm. to, to get the win. Uh, I think they called it a draw, didn't they? And, uh, no, they actually gave me the loss in that one. They did? Yeah, they gave me the loss. Couldn't well, believe it. Well, I, I, so I, I thought you'd won. Yeah, you know, because exactly. after two rounds. The first, maybe the first three fights I uh, had as a pro didn't go my way. So was it a draw or then two losses then? Was draw, it? two losses, yeah. yeah so I finally got my win. And your third one was at the FO Arena yeah, against uh, Jed Carroll, wasn't Carole. it? Yeah. And again, a lot of people, it was a very close fight with mm. one, one point in it. Um, mm. Then you had a nice little run, I think you had five, four runs on, mm. four wins on the bounce. Yeah. And then you took a gamble. Mm. And you went over and you fought um, uh, Kevin Hooper. That's it. Who, you know, he'd been England's champion. Mm. He, he was a, a kid who'd for that levels at, at that point you, yeah. you, you were only dreaming of. Mm, so, I wouldn't say that. I always fancied myself against the likes of Kevin Hooper even. I know, but there, you, had, but you had that, that opportunity. Maybe yeah, maybe maybe the, the opportunity came and I should have been more patient, but I guess I don't know. At my level where I didn't have that promotion, I didn't have that sort of backing at the start. Mm -hmm. I feel like when an opportunity comes my way, it's gotta take it. Well, that's what I'm going to. You, that was an eight rounder, you would never done eight rounds mm, before, yeah. and you lost by one point yeah. away from home. That's it. I think it says a lot. You know, so there's a big jump going from eight, four rounds to eight rounds. It guess, does, yeah. and into his back garden yeah. against a guy who's fought at a much higher level than you. Yeah. So realistically, when you take that into consideration, that record of yours, mm. which is I think five, three, and one, mm. actually, it's, it's, it's not a bad. It's so, deceiving. You know, it's deceiving. It is very mm. deceiving. Mm. So how do you feel about Jimo? Do you know much about Steve Brogan? I've seen a few clips of him, uh, I've seen his record and yeah, pending and just studying him and that's all I've got now. Just well, keep studying Steve's, and studying. Steve's a, a little bit older than you, I think Steve's yeah. about 34. Yeah. He knows he can't afford to lose. Mm. A lot of pressure on him. Yeah. You, you know, I don't think there's really any pressure on you. You're just, no, I'm just going a hungry, to his hometown. And hungry young lad and just, just come to fight. Every fight I come to fight. And well, I must admit, I, 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 you always put a smile on my face when yeah. I watch you. Uh, quite an aggressive fighter, aren't yeah. you? You don't, uh, you don't take too many steps backwards, do you? Yeah. I guess I have been since the amateur days, and it's just how I've been. And well, what was your amateur career like? Amateur career was okay, I guess. Um, it was kind of disjointed, a little bits of time off mm -hmm. due to uni and studying, and not really sure if I wanted to do boxing or not. Well, when I did get a good run of fights, uh, did de decent in the championships in my final year. I think I got to quarterfinals. Um, what, was that the Elise then? Elise, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So straight after finishing uni, I went, had one more go with that before turning pro. But, yeah, I've had a good time of going to uni, getting a degree. So what do you feel then, now then, all those little disappointments that you've had, mm. uh, um, you, 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 you think that's going to benefit you now for going forward with this fight? 
Um, definitely, definitely. Um, all the setbacks I've had in my life is just making me harder and mentally tougher. Mm -hmm. um, a big thing that made me turn pro was losing, losing my dad. All right. So that was the, the main turning point for me that I thought How long I wanted. Long I, I lost it uh, in 2015. Oh, so it's a long recent then. Yeah. Four years ago. And I think I used that to really help me sort of get over. Well, that would have been when you turned pro as well, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's it. Right. Yeah. Well, that was a big turning point for you then. For me, I, I wanted to turn pro with my dad in my corner, and right. so. I, not quite, because he wasn't really a coach, but I just wanted him there. To yeah, watch yeah, me. yeah. Well, it was nice and here yeah. because mm. you know, I mean, this place is buzzing now, isn't mm. it? We, you know, we had Young Campbell out in here. Yeah, we had yeah. um, Adam Sai, Circa, Circa, mm. um, and them two had a great little spa mm. there. And you and Andy Kremlin were banging away on the bags there mm. together. Mm. So it must be nice here. You know, nice little buzz going. Yeah. A lot of hungry fighters here right now, and yeah, a really growing brand new stable. And yeah, and that's strange because you're talking about your father being there, but Andy mm. Kremlin's dad, yeah, always there. And that's why that's why I'm really envious of. Yeah, I kind of sometimes look at them two and try and imagine my dad being there. Yeah, yeah. So you use that as fuel and for, 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 for your fights and definitely and, and, and every day, every every minute of my day, I use that as fuel to keep me keep me going. Well. Friday, uh, week on Friday, which is the 20th. Mm -hmm. I wish you all the luck for that. Mm -hmm. Come through that fight, like I say, which sets up October the 5th. Yeah. An absolutely cracking opportunity, mm -hmm. uh, an opportunity for you to fight for the central area mm -hmm. and gain your first title. <laughs> I don't want you to because you're fighting our guy, but I know because I've seen you fight many times. I know it's going to be a cracking fight. It's going to be and I know you're going to test yeah. uh, Steve to the limit, and uh, Steve's going to be a on his top form mm. to beat you. So yeah. I think the fans in Liverpool at the Olympia on October yeah. 5th are in for a cracking night. Back to me. Alright, Irving, take care mate. Thank you. Bye bye.